atmosphere at the York Barbican. Day six, 12 players left standing, four more spots to fill in the quarterfinals. And Ronnie O'Sullivan, three decades after his first UK Championship title, continues his quest for an eighth. Standing in his way, a man playing the snooker Thank of his life the in the last couple of seasons, Rob Milkins. First to six to go through to the quarters. The head-to-head -head undoubtedly makes grim reading for the Milkman. Played eight, lost eight, won just seven frames in those eight matches to O'Sullivan's 46. Three whitewashes, including here at the UK in 2014. So the only way is up for Milkins, you would think. Not ideal, though, Dom, to leave a red sticking over the pocket first up. No, just when you're looking for a good start. That happens to you. Only taking a risk here, playing it very slowly, and I think that cue ball definitely drifted to our right as we look. So all of a sudden that mistake from Rob Milkins has proved beneficial, and what a chance this is. And he made the point ahead of this match that to have a chance today, realistically, he's got to get at O'Sullivan early. Well establish himself right at the beginning of this match, build some confidence, trying to raise the memories of his previous meetings. He was very candid about his record. He's got a great sense of humour. But what a couple of seasons Six. he's had. His first ranking title at the Gibraltar Open after 27 years as a pro when he beat Kyron Wilson and then last season, not only winning the Welsh Open against one of the form horses, Sean Murphy, but also nicking that £150,000 European Series bonus. Seven. Back in the top 16, looking good, as Jimmy mentioned, for the Masters. So life's pretty sweet at the moment for Milkins, and he surely has never been better equipped to give O'Sullivan a run for his money. I'm sure Rob Milkins will come in today's encounter with 14. Ronnie. In a good frame of mind. 15. From his point of view, his opening match with Tep Chiron Nu was all important because he was on zero ranking points because it was his first match as a top 16 seeded player and he's gone from zero ranking points to 15,000 ranking points having won that one match. So there's a lot of pressure off Rob Milkins now and he can just focus on doing his best and playing at his best and just seeing what happens 22. today really. And he was quite brilliant in coming back from two down with three to play to beat Tepchira and New made two centuries. It was a terrific match all the way through. Thirty. Handed low on the red, had to power through <coughs> the pack there. Needed some luck to be on a colour. Had the blue remained on its spot, he may have had a shot at that, but the pink has cannoned it away. He's on nothing really, unless he wants to take a risk. Robert Milkins, 31. A nerve settling 31 break from Milkins. Sullivan here, courtesy of what was in the end a pretty comfortable 6-2 victory over Anthony McGill. It didn't look that way at the beginning. He lost the first two frames, but he got stronger. McGill faded a little. And as we saw ahead of this match in his dressing room, he looks extremely relaxed, seems to be enjoying himself here. He hasn't played a lot of snooker this season. He's pulled out of four ranking events and the champion of champions recently. But when he has shown up, he's done pretty well. Semi-finalist 
at the International Championship recently where he lost to Zhang Ander, quarter finalist in Wuhan prior to that. That's gone wrong from Milken, so an opportunity for a counter from O'Sullivan, who's sitting pretty as a result of those deep runs in big money events in China as regards the Players' Series in the new year, so no pressure in terms of the one-year list. One. Rob Milkins caught that safety so thickly. Can't help but feel that was a nervous mistake from him to struck it so poorly. It could be very costly. Well, these cloths were renewed just a couple of days ago. Four. I think Ronnie got a lot more reaction out the cue ball there than he was expecting. Still has a chance at this red net to the black. But of course, he can still get through to the one over the right centre. A little less control of the cue ball, though, playing that one, perhaps. And he's on nothing. Five. Ronnie O'Sullivan, five. Again, Rob Milkins has caught that way too thickly. And I think that could be something to do with the new cloth. Rob Milkins in his first round was one of the last to play on the old cloth before it was taken off and a new one put on. And it can cause you a lot of problems. The difference can be quite stark between a new cloth and one that's been on for several days. Brushed to nine many times between sessions. Five. Well, he may consider playing for the green if it's available. Just makes Six. that red net a bit more available. The last of his record seven UK crowns came five years ago now made the quarterfinals in the last two years. Last year, he was beaten 6-0 by Ding. Nine. Ten. Thirteen. Fourteen. Ronnie would like to play for the red that's close to the black spot. And he's played for the one near the corner pocket. Now if he pots the black afterwards, I'm just wondering if it ties the red up 18. because that's close to the black spot. Nineteen. Oh, that's just about stopped in time. Not ideal though.
Manny O'Sullivan, 19. One. Eight. Straight on this red. I don't know how much pace you can play this red at. It's a fairly acute angle. Rob may consider just dollying it in and playing for the brown. Nine. Twelve. So nineteen points the lead. Rob Milkins can roll the red in with the black. Only O'Sullivan could only tie. And the yellow's in an awkward position, so it may be worth a consideration here to play for the black. Rob Milkins, twelve. No pot, but O'Sullivan snookered on the red. to be an issue. Well, it's not very often a player would attempt to pot a red so far off the cushion like that. Don't know whether Ronnie did or didn't. But it's worth bringing the pink into play here because Ronnie needs all the remaining colours. Ronnie O'Sullivan won. Milken's record at the UK is very average, just one quarter final, and that was 21 years ago. Oh, that's a poor shot from Rob Milkins. He should have realised that the yellow could go over that left corner. Again, I just think he caught it too thickly. But it was difficult Two. to get on the green from there. But all of a sudden, Ronnie O'Sullivan's worked himself back into this frame, and to be honest, given the position of the colours, it's still anybody's frame, this. Ronnie O'Sullivan for two. Good safety, though. Milken snookered. at the moment needs green and brown for the frame. Oh, the ricochet from the jaw of the middle po pocket from Rob Milkins's point of view is very unfortunate. This is a great chance now for Ronnie. Quite a scrappy opening frame, quite a bitty affair, and feels, given their past history, that Milkins needs it rather more than O'Sullivan. 
him something to work with early in this match, having had so many beatings at the hands of the Rocket in the past. These are very edgy shots that Rob Milkins is playing. I suggest he's rather tense and pensive. Milkins made the point to Rachel ahead of this match that he actually tends to feel more nervous at the beginning of a match than he does at the end. And there's some evidence of that. If he could somehow fall over the line in this frame, just settle himself down, we could be in for a real contest this afternoon. Certainly he showed plenty of metal last season in winning the Welsh Open, given what was Riding on it financially, if nothing else. Oh, double kiss from O'Sullivan. Another chance for Milkins. And he only needs the green and the brown. Three. Well, it's not a frame that's going to live long in the memory for quality, but Milkins won't care if this brown goes in. And O'Sullivan can't get the snookers he'd then need. Twelve. It's been quite an edgy beginning. But 18. Rob Milkins has had the last word. After Ronnie O'Sullivan got an unwanted double kiss, he's cleared the colours required to take the opening frame. A big boost for the Milkman as he delivers a 1-0 lead. So little to draw upon in terms of their previous eight meetings. He's averaged one less than one frame per match in the past, but he's got the first one today. It was nervy, it wasn't pretty, but he won't care about that. He's ahead, and that is an unusual experience for Rob against the seven times champion. Can he now build on it? Thank First to six, of course, frame. to go through. Higgins or Joe Yulong to play the winner in the quarterfinals tomorrow. long red from Ronnie because when playing with a little bit of side spin particularly on the green in the previous frame he had a couple of goes at it and missed them on the thick side he'd have been mindful of that as he attempted that long red this cloth has been on a couple of days but I have to say having witnessed that first frame it's playing like a cloth that was put on 10 minutes ago it's causing a few issues for the players Bye. Six. <coughs> O'Sullivan still sporting his trainers, which we saw in his victory over Anthony McGill in round one. He's hurt his ankle. He's had all sorts of treatment on it in a bid to fix it. He's also suffered from tennis elbow in recent times. We've seen him wincing once or twice this season, playing shots. Something Ten. that reared its head about 18 months ago. I guess you're bound to get one or two aches and pains as you head towards your 48th birthday, which comes up for Ronnie next week. 
Yeah, I've had a touch of tennis elbow this season as well. It's quite painful because you spend your whole career, 30 odd years, just as a professional, let alone your amateur days. And as you strike the cue ball, you squeeze a bit like a tennis player on impact. Yeah. You do that for hundreds of thousands of times, more than that. In a career. Take its toll on you. Eleven. To that red on the thick side, so that's meant the cue ball can travel as far as Ronnie intended it to. No problem though. It is on the red. Certainly the one next to the blue will go into the green pocket. 18. Nineteen. Twenty four. Sullivan not only bidding to break his own record in winning an eighth UK title, he's looking for his 40th ranking title in all to extend that record. And he hasn't won one since he won his seventh world championship against Trump last year. In fact, he didn't get any further than the quarterfinals in a ranking event last season, although he won two big invitationals, Shanghai Masters and the Hong Kong Masters. When the ball is making contact with the cushion rails, it's just skidding a little and coming off at a narrow angle, which I think is foxing both players at the moment a little. What an excellent recovery. I've seen a couple of Really good shots to keep this little break going so far from O'Sullivan. taken a little while but finally Ronnie has these reds exactly where he wants them now the black will pot 36. into the right corner again that cue will just skidded a little off the side cushion it's gone a bit higher on the blue than Ronnie thought Surprise, he missed a brown in the opening frame, a cut back into the yellow pocket. Now he's missed it into the green pocket. And the break ends prematurely on 36. Shake of the head from O'Sullivan. One. This is only Milkin's second foray into the round of 16 at the UK Championship since that UK best quarter final more than two decades ago. Oh, he's overcut the black. 
These are the opportunities he simply has to take. O'Sullivan hasn't really settled in this match yet. And yes, he's got the first frame, but every chance that comes his way really has to be taken. That one's gone astray. One. Robert Melkins is playing this match, and so he's very tense and anxious, nervous, all of those things that you can feel when you're not entirely confident. Oh, that's another miss. And this is the thing sometimes, when your opponent is really struggling with the nerves and the tension, you, you, you feel it as your opponent as well, and it can transfer to you sometimes, and I think Ron is making some uncharacteristic errors himself here. One. Rare indeed that you would get as many opportunities as this. But Milkins is already being presented with as O'Sullivan misses that pink. You can't believe it. I'm sure Milkins couldn't either. So can he take advantage this time? Six. Seven. He needs to be a little careful with this positional shot from the black. Unless he plays with the red that's closest to it. Oh, he caught the red. That's another poor mistake from Rob Milkins. 14. Nineteen. Twenty. Clearly, the tricky red is the one below the black. We'll be pleased that this break is continuing, Rob Milkins, because he missed that red to the left centre. It's fortunate that it rolled off a little. Yes, that red seemed to drift to the right, when, if anything, it should go with whatever nap is on this cloth, and there's not a lot and move to the left, which, had it done so, would have taken it to the jaw, but Milkins won't care. Can he double his lead? This 35. is a key shot. 36. That's another one which, had the cloth been a bit older, might have stayed above ground. Forty-three scores. Now just seven in favour of Milkins. Should be two nil. Forty-five. Oh, he's overscrewed that Rob, but it shouldn't be difficult to get onto the brown really. But he's not the tallest chap, Rob Milkins is. Perhaps going to play this with the extension piece on his cue. He's going to have to play this off the bolt cushion, so it's imperative he judges the speed well. Doesn't need to worry about the pink. The blue will suffice. 48. <laughs> 52. This for 2-0. Fifty-seven. 
Rob Milkins had only won seven frames in their eight previous meetings. He's won two already this afternoon. It's been error strewn, but Milkins won't mind because he's won both. Ronnie O'Sullivan with something to think about. He trails 2-0. Ronnie O'Sullivan missed a routine pink, which cost him in frame two. He's not settled yet. He's taking Thank you, the third frame. a little bit of time to get to Ronnie grips O'Sullivan with this break. lightning fast clock. But of course, he was 2 0 down against Anthony McGill in round one and didn't lose another frame. Nevertheless, just the start that Milkins needed, given his record against O'Sullivan, and from a neutral's perspective, just makes the match a lot more intriguing given how one-sided their previous eight encounters have been. Bob Milkins could attempt the red to the right corner, but I don't think he's entirely sure the cue ball would avoid contacting the red and the black, so it'd be risky. He's turned it down. It's a poor well, safety. Bob Milkins will be astonished to be 2-0 up given the way he's played so far and the mistakes that he's making, but so is Ronnie. Missed that simple brown in the last frame, then a pink. So room for improvement for both. O'Sullivan, rock solid in all departments, better than rock solid in fact, but Milkins is a very good safety player himself. Tournament pot success, not much in it. Not too much evidence to go by, of course. This is only their second match here at the Barbican. Thank you. Quite a few safety mistakes. All of that said from Milkins already in this match. They haven't proved expensive so far. And they continue not to be O'Sullivan all at sea so far this afternoon. Not easy queuing, clearly, hampered by the pink, but you'd still have expected him to get it. Well, I think both of these players, Phil, would love to just wrap these balls up and start the whole match again. I mean, you can make each other very nervous when mistakes like this are being made from close range. One person's tension and anxiety can transfer wow. to the other. Shake of the head from Milkins. Yes, he's 2-0 up, but... Will be acutely aware that it's highly unlikely O'Sullivan's going to continue to make the errors he's done so far for much longer. Absolutely Six. has to maximise every opportunity he gets if he's to cause an upset this afternoon. Seven. Twelve. Thirteen. 
18. Nineteen. Well, that was the red that Ronnie will be glad to see the back of. Brings the pink into play now. Something he needs, given that the black is unavailable at the moment. One of these players 24. just needs to make a break, just to settle down. I know Rob Milkins made a 63, but that was when the frame was virtually guaranteed. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. No mistake with the pink this time. He missed it into the opposite centre in frame two, which cost him. Thirty-eight. Just signs that O'Sullivan is belatedly settling down. 39. Milkins had another chance early in this Off frame after O'Sullivan had missed, hampered by the pink into this corner. 46. But Rob missed himself straight away. 46. And this time it looks like being costly. 52. This is the sort of Ronnie O'Sullivan I'm sure Rob Milkins was expecting to see. 59. Top score with 92 in his victory over McGill in round one. 60. When he also fell 2 0 behind before winning six on the bounce. 's-frame ball barring a snooker. 66. 67. 73. 74. 80. Thank you. 81. be done to make a century. 85. Oh, beautifully. 86. Beautifully cued. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 86. In no the century, but Ronnie O'Sullivan has shaken off the early rust this afternoon with a fluent 86 to half the deficit. Rob Milkins had another chance early in that frame, couldn't take it. It's 2 1. But O'Sullivan's 86 was much more like it. So 2 1 to Milkins. It's fast, fast and furious frame. as we expected it would be between Robert this pair. Average frame time less than 13 minutes. We're already at the frame before the interval.
a useful safety from Ronnie O'Sullivan because although Rob Milkins can play off the right-hand side of the pack of reds, that red near the right-hand side cushion could cause a problem. Time a player leaps up off the shot like that, it's bad news. And sure enough, the unintended cannon on the red on the side cushion has left O'Sullivan back in, and now he's in stroke. That's the difference. One wow. was missing quite a few in the first two frames, but he's settled himself into the match with a run of 86 just now. He's got the pace of the table, and that could be trouble for the milkman. Well, you can see Rob Milkins' safety stat there, just 36%. His pot success apparently is 90%. He's only missed four pots. Well, I do struggle to believe that, but there you go. Seven. Ronnie was able to play for the black to the right corner. This is a key shot here. If this black goes in and he gets on his next red, no reason why he won't score heavily. Fourteen. Fifteen. Can play a cannon here delicately into the red above the black. Oh, he's just rested against it. Didn't want that. He does have an alternative red to the left corner, but... 22. He'll do well to be precise with his position here. May have to use the red to the left of this one. Just to flick off a position on the blue, perhaps. 23. Lucky kiss there. That's pretty much ideal. Seven times champion. Six of those weren't even close. Only one was O'Sullivan. 28. Really extended. That was a brilliant comeback from Trump from 9 4 behind in 2014 before O'Sullivan held his nerve in the decider. 29. The deeper he goes, the stronger he gets. By the time he gets to the final, very, very difficult to beat. I had to raise a smile there. I just saw a glimpse of Rob Milkins rather slumbered in his 36. chair. Goodness knows what he's thinking about his performance this afternoon. The scoreline's OK, though. 2-0. I think he knew that he dodged a couple of bullets to take that lead and that he would have to play a lot better. And at the moment, it looks likely that that lead is going to prove fleeting. 44. Forty-five. With Sullivan settling into his usual pace around the table. 18. Jot Milkins is similar, in fact. Never looks as though he's rushing, though, does he? Because his cue ball control is so good. 52. Doesn't have to take too long normally to think about his shots because the cue ball's exactly where he wants it to be. 52. That one required a bit 53. of a stretch, but no problem. 53. And then out of the blue, the black eludes him. So, 53 the lead. Still plenty there.
One. <coughs> well, this isn't a great chance by any means for Rob Milkins. No easy loose reds to play for. Try to get into the pack there. I'll say pack the four reds and the pink. Good effort. Six. Robert Milking six. Again, though, another very thickly hit safety. And it's uncharacteristic of Milkins to be this loose in terms of his safety game. It's normally one of his strengths. <coughs> O'Sullivan, though, less than thrilled with his level so far this afternoon. One. Rob would love to have been a little further up in bulk for the blue. To go into the four reds. He's managed it anyway. Oh, he's unlucky there. Really is. Couldn't have played it much better. Six. Robert Milking six. A hint of a double kiss, but he's got away with it. Forty one the lead, now sixty seven left. There's nothing more than a half chance, really, for Rob Milkins, but he'd be pleased that he didn't hit it on the thick side on that occasion. So the cue ball's just found bulk. Chance of Ronnie to cut this red into the left corner. Good effort. Now he needs some cover, and he may get some... Oh, no, that cue ball. My goodness, that came off the bulk cushion quickly. Well, I'm surprised he's not playing the blue and screwing back for that red next to the black. Good pop with the rest. Excellent. That had to go. What a frame this would be for Milkins to pinch. He's looking to break new ground in this frame. He's never won three in any match against O'Sullivan before. He was once beaten with a session to spare at the Crucible by him. But Eight. Still a glimmer in this one. 33 behind. He's certainly not going to take a backward step, that's for sure. He loves to attack. Eleven. Twelve. Oh, I think that's a poor shot from Rob. 
He should have left himself low on the pink for me. To cannon that awkward red into play. He'd have been on that one all the one next to the pink. But still chances. Can he bring that tricky red into play 18. here? <coughs> Twenty four disappointed. The cube will cannon into the pink there. Maybe you can still cut this red to the centre, but it's a very difficult pot now. Robert Milkins, 24. <coughs> 17, now the difference with 35 left. And Sullivan's long potting in recent times has been as good as ever. Just be a frame winner. And there was just a sniff there for Milkins to take a 3 1 interval lead. Beautifully struck. <coughs> 20 in front, so Three. just another yellow and the green required. Five. He took a 2 0 lead, albeit in two rather scrappy frames, Eight. which were littered with errors. O'Sullivan found his feet in the third with an 86. Got in with 53 in Whoa. this one, Mr. Black. But Milkins wasn't quite able to capitalise. 17. And so it's as you were. It's now a best of seven for a place in the UK Championship quarterfinals. 23 in the frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan clears to the pink. Not the highest quality so far this afternoon on table one at the York Barbican. But O'Sullivan will be the happier of the two, having lost the first two frames. He seemed to be struggling a bit but he's begun to find his game, and that could be bad news for the man he's beaten eight times out of eight. At the break, it's two apiece. They both need four. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. A genius for sure. That's possibly not been particularly in evidence in the first four frames from O'Sullivan, who looked a bit down on himself at times with some of the misses, particularly in the first couple, but... He was able to regroup in a way that perhaps a few years ago he might not have done because he would have been fed up with the way he was playing. Breaks of 86 and 53 to level at two all against Rob Milkins. And that's one of the things that O'Sullivan has talked about in recent times. This week he's talked about being a player reborn, looking back on his first UK title when he was still only 17, 30 years ago, but saying that the last 10 years have been more enjoyable because... He's kind of found a peace with himself and the game. He's more accepting of days when he's not producing his best, this being one of them so far. And he's more resilient. Of course, he hooked up with sports psychiatrist Steve Peters, which has done him, as he says, the world of good. So he's a more formidable match player these days than perhaps he's ever been, Don. Yeah, possibly. It's difficult to make those assumptions, really. I think the only judge of that will be Ronnie himself. All of that said, if you'd offered Rob Milkins, given his record against O'Sullivan, two each at the interval, before they struck a ball this afternoon. I'm sure he'd have taken it. 
Remember, he'd only won seven frames in their previous eight matches combined, including a whitewash loss here, the only previous time, aside from that quarterfinal 21 years ago, that he made the round of 16. Looks like he's left this red. No, just the safety. Such a great safety as well. I don't think Ron is given enough credit sometimes for his tactical abilities. I don't think he's all that far behind you know, one of the greatest ever, and that's Mark Selby and people like John Higgins. Oh, it tends to be overshadowed by seven, the other stats that are always associated Back. with him. His extraordinary tally of centuries, 1,224. 15, is also a record. Ben Williams, our referee, having to do a bit of replacing. The winner, of course, to play either John Higgins or Joe Yulong. And Joe is going nicely again after that brilliant performance to defeat Neil Robertson. He's 2-1 up. And he's in the balls, 20 in front in the fourth frame. That's on Discovery Plus. Milkins bidding for a 25th ranking quarterfinal in all. Turn pro in 1995. It took him 27 years to finally lift a ranking title. Gibraltar Open when he beat Karen Wilson. And that came at a time when his form was on the floor and he wasn't in a good place. The Welsh Open, even more impressive last season when he denied Sean Murphy the title. Picked up that bonus in the process. But it's O'Sullivan. He slots the red in. It's actually finished rather nicely on the blue. If the red to the right of the pink would pot, that would be handy, but I don't think it does. Just that really well. Didn't have a lot of room there. The straighter he could leave himself on this red, the better. And he couldn't have played it a lot Six. better than he has. Putting this red does bring the black into play somewhat. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. This could be awkward for Ronnie O'Sullivan, this red looks Thank rather you. straight to me. Twenty-three. Oh, he's done well there to get the cue ball so far out for the black. Played it with a lot of left hand side. Needs a good cannon here though.
Bertie. Thirty-one. Signs that normal service is being resumed here. Sullivan was scratchy in the first couple of frames. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Forty-seven. Robert Milkins made a sixty-three break at the end of the second frame to win it. Since then, he hasn't made a break above thirty. Ronnie O'Sullivan struggling certainly in the first two or three 55. frames has suddenly come to life a little more breaks of 86 53 to level at two all now this effort 62 63 this frame has only been going not even nine minutes, and already Sullivan on the cusp of a third consecutive frame. 75 left, frame ball. Average shot time now down at 17 Seven. seconds. Seventy-one. We have had a maximum break already this year in qualifying. So you, sir, of China against Ma Hai Long. Seventy-eight. And World Snooker have announced that anyone who makes two maximums in the Triple Ground series this season will pick up a further £147,000. There's a £15,000 high break prize in this event on its own. 85. But this is much more 86. like it from O'Sullivan. He looked a little irked even when he levelled at two all as he left the arena. Always striving for perfection, but certainly more accepting these days when he has to scrap it out a bit more. 93. But there's been nothing scrappy about this break. 94. For the century. 94. Incredibly, his 1225th, his 23rd of the season. 102. Hundred and eight. Hundred and nine. And suddenly everything is like shelling peas again. A few uncharacteristic errors. Hundred and fifteen. At the start of the match. Hundred and seven. This has been a flawless like break. And 
And Rob Milkins yeah, is going to have to find the level he produced at the back end of his match with Tepchaira Nu. He made a couple of centuries himself. He turned it round from 5-3 behind. 124. 129. 135. Ronnie O'Sullivan is back with a bang. 100. 42 total clearance for his third consecutive frame. He has well and truly arrived. He leads 3-2. The question is, can the milkman raise his game, keep himself in contention? Thank you for the sixth frame. Robert Milkins to break. Settle down, please. not happy with the outcome there he's left a straightish long red to the yellow pocket for Rob Milkins who ordinarily wouldn't miss this One. Oh. great chance now to play the blue with force take the cue ball into the pack of reds with pace you've always got to have a look at the pack of reds though there could be a plant there hiding somewhere could find a pocket. Just didn't catch them right at all there. Six. May still have a potable red at the bottom of the main bunch. But no guarantee of position. The red to the centre, that was more advantageous, but the pot was more difficult. Milkins has always been a positive player, regardless of who he's playing. He'll go for his shots. And that's probably why Sullivan has enjoyed playing him down the years, because he is so attacking and he will give you chances. Well. But there's a different sort of steel about Milkins these days. Now he's a ranking event champion. He's taken his confidence to a new level. 13. He knows he can go all the way in a big tournament. This match is being played at quite a pace. 20. 13 minutes per frame is the average. And when you consider the first couple were scrappy. Twenty one. These reds to the right corner. The only ones that Rob can play for. There's nothing really going in the left corner. Twenty eight. Twenty-nine. 
36. Just beginning to lose ideal position here, Rob Milkins, but this shouldn't be a problem. Forty-four. Forty-five. Well, this could be a problem for Rob Milkins. The red to the right centre is very awkward now, having to queue over these reds. Yes, he's furious. Didn't get close. Pushed it away from the pocket. So, second half century at the match, but nowhere near enough to clinch the frame. 52 the lead. He's afraid to look. One. There's not really a safe ball on the table. And that's because the red that Rob Milkins missed rebounded from the top jaw of the middle pocket and just developed three or four reds. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. I think Ron has just overran that slightly. He'd love to just screw back into the pink and red together just to open them up. But couldn't quite do it there. Maybe he'll look for an angle now on the black just to delicately can on that pink and red because 24. you'd expect him to be on either of the two reds above and below it. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. That seemed like a kick to me. In the end, I think lucky that the red went in. Forty. Forty-one. Ronnie well, hasn't been able to separate that red and pink, so that's going to be a problem for him now. Forty-five. I don't know if Ronnie can come off the side cushion with enough 
left hand side to cannon into the pink and red. He may have to screw into them directly. Hang on. Hang on. Oh dear. Well, if it's touching ball, it would help. Nope. But you can still lay a snooker here. Daniel Sullivan, 49. So, Rob Milkins with the initial 52, missed the red to the right centre. Sullivan coming back, unable to quite get the cannon he wanted to release the final red, which would surely have given him the frame, but he's got the snooker. Big, big frame now for Milkins, if he could somehow find a way to pinch this one. Stay in touch. As it is, he's now facing four reverses in a row. Settle down, please. Thank you. Thank you. One. Milkins fearing the worst. Ten. Thirteen. O'Sullivan needs the pink for his fourth consecutive frame. Seventeen. Cancel that, the blue will do. 22. Well, he started in fairly indifferent fashion, but he's grown stronger and stronger. 142 22. total 22. clearance in the previous frame. And after Milkins had missed on 52, O'Sullivan stepped in with 49 and has cleared to the pink and leads by four frames to two. 7 o'clock UK. Ronnie O'Sullivan bidding for a 140th ranking quarter-final appearance. Well on his way. Four frames in a row. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. And a 4-2 lead. Considering the circumstances, that's not too bad a break off from Ronnie. I just wonder if Rob Milkins does take the straightish red on, how confident he'll be about getting it. Could stun the cue ball almost dead where the red is for the pink in the opposite corner. Oh, great pop. Fortunately yeah. for Rob Milkins, though, the cue ball has finished in no man's land. Yellow ball. Robert Milkins won. He was 5-3 behind, of course, to Tep Chaya in the first round and played brilliantly to turn it around, but facing O'Sullivan is a rather different proposition given his record in particular. As good as Milkins is, he's just never been able to lay a glove on the rocket. And that's another supremely well-struck red from long range. O 
only to miss the blue. Shades of the first couple of frames all of a sudden. Yes, he missed the blue because he didn't quite get enough backspin on the cue ball. One. Imperative now that Rob Milkins can capitalise from that error. He could do is making a big break here just to one settle him down and two show his opponent that any mistakes can and will be punished. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-four. O'Sullivan leading the way in terms of pace of shot on average. Second clear of his opponent today. Two clear of Tepchaya. Thank you. Twenty-five. Frames are getting quicker. Under 13 minutes per frame now, but... 32. However long this frame lasts, surely essential for Milkins to win it if he's to entertain thoughts of upsetting the seven times champion today. You could see the two reds at the top of the pack there, certainly not set for a plant. Rob Milkins, in all likelihood, will attempt to leave an angle on the black here to go into that little pack of reds. Thank you. But they're not a good pack to go into, in my opinion, from the black. It just depends how they split, but normally when you have a little shelf of reds at the back of the packers, is formed here. It's normally better to go into them then from the blue. Because Rob Milkins was aware of it, he tried to leave himself on the plant. Now it's not really a plant, it's very much oh. offset, as you can see. It can be made, but my goodness, he'll have to hit that top red very thinly. I don't like this personally, I have to say. Because the cue ball will be running into the reds and splitting everything up into the open. This has to go in. wondering Rob Milkins and his bid to get back into contention and he keeps the break going oh, Rob certainly proved me wrong there but even so I, I don't think I'd have been taking that plant on 46 Having got it, though, it's a gilt-edged chance now to close to 4-3. 47. Led by 52 in the previous frame before he found himself with awkward queuing, missed and 
paid the price. So he'll be very conscious of the need to make sure he finishes this frame here and now. 55. Sixty-two. Just this red. Sixty-three. And it's a good response to the disappointment at the way in which he lost the previous frame when he was in control of it. An absolute must win, and win it he has. Sixty-nine. And this frame isn't even eight minutes old. Seventy. Whirlwind stuff from this pair, as expected. And we could be in for a real contest yet. We haven't had one when these two have played in the past. It's been strictly one way in favour of O'Sullivan. But already Rob Milkins has made progress in that regard. This is the first time he's ever won three frames against O'Sullivan in this their ninth meeting. 85. 86. Terrific shot to release the red and keep hopes of a century alive. 91. <laughs> Robert Milkins, 91. No century, but that's a really good break in the circumstances from Rob Milkins. He desperately needed it, and the Milkman has delivered in the nick of time to stay in contention. Ronnie O'Sullivan still leads, but only by one at 4-3. Pegged back to 4-3 by an excellent break of 91 from Rob Milkins, his frame. best by far of the afternoon. Rob Milkins to break. This match is being played at a furious pace. 12 minutes and 19 seconds is the average frame time. It's going down by the frame. That's another good break off from Milkins. Vital when you've won a frame as he's just done, not to then let your opponent straight in. He's not done that. Very important frame, quite clearly. If O'Sullivan wins it, he'll be within a frame of victory. If Rob Milkins can win it, the pressure will be on both players. As it'll be tied at four all, of course. Very much reminds me of the sort of safety shots he used to see from Stephen Hendry back in the day. He used to play these attacking safety shots and put your safety shot under immense pressure. Ronnie 
Joe Sullivan has found an absolutely perfect cue ball there. The brown is hiding the two reds together on the right-hand side of the table. The yellow blocking any possible balls to the left corner. And I can't see an easy path back to bulk here. Do very well to get this safe. Very well. He felt compelled to take that red on. Had it not been for the double kiss, may have finished reasonably well, but there is a red on to the right centre pocket for Ronnie. The straighter, the better for him. Gives him a chance to play for the blue. Wow. Yes, we saw the other side of O'Sullivan there with that millimetre perfect safety, opening the reds, getting Milkins tight under the bolt rail, piling on the pressure. Not going to be thrilled with that one, though. Six. Out of position. It's, it's amazing where you can leave that cue ball and yet still be among all the balls, but not yet be on anything. <laughs> Dear me. Even Ronnie found the funny side of that, briefly, anyway. Sullivan six. So relief for Milkins that O'Sullivan couldn't make more from that opportunity, which looked likely before he just lost position. He's in unfamiliar territory here, the Milkman. First time he's been able to hang tough with O'Sullivan. Apply some pressure of his own. Can he sustain it? Can he make this a best of three? There is a possible red for Ronnie here to the left-hand corner pocket. Problem is, the three reds in that right-hand side cushion could be a big problem trying to get back to bulk, so he's looking instead at the straightish one. He's all in pot. A similar ball at the end of the fourth frame. Oh. Well, well, in my opinion, Sullivan's long game is as good as it's ever been in terms of its consistency. Nothing wrong with those nearly 48-year-old eyes. Just needs one decent positional shot here, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and I can't see him breaking down the way he did previously. Brilliant. 
screen. I think that moment a couple of shots ago when O'Sullivan lost position is indicative of how he's changed his mindset in his career. There is definitely a time when that would have absolutely infuriated him to the point where it would have impacted his performance thereafter to lose position with the red oh. spread after the great safety he played to create the chance. But he was able to smile, albeit, of course, he felt frustrated, played a decent safety, and has just knocked in a cracking red to reassume control of the table. 11. Indicative, I think, these days of how much more at peace he is with the sport, his part in it, plays on his own terms, which 12. doesn't always go down entirely well with the authorities, but I don't think he's ever been in a more serene spot in his career than he is now, and it shows on the table more often than not. Nineteen. Thirty five. Thirty six. Just for a moment there, he was concerned about where the cue ball was going to end up, but he's OK. 44. and the red to the right centre automatically brings into play the two reds to the right of it into the right hand corner pocket 52 it was a sweetly struck long red that got O'Sullivan back in here And now just a black away from being two up with three to play. Sixty seven. Sixty eight. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. The longest frame of this match was the first, and that was only 17 minutes. The average remains 83. a shade over 12. No second century, but a superbly constructed break nonetheless from Ronnie O'Sullivan, who's closing in again on a 20th UK quarterfinal at 5-3. I'm the UK O'Sullivan champion who'd love to lift that magnificent trophy for an eighth time on Sunday evening, breaking off in frame nine, one away.
This is the scenario Milkins found himself in in the first round against Tepchaya, and he played superbly to turn that match around. If he could do it today against O'Sullivan, that would be even more impressive. And that's a good opening red. Well, you'd be disappointed to have left that red, but it was an excellent red, this from Rob Milkins, tight under the bulk cushion. He'd love to think that that red next to the black would pot into the right corner because that would really bring the black into play. If that red pots, he's certainly going to be on it. Four. <coughs> Does look quite tight, this. I'm not sure it goes myself. Normally, your first glance is the correct one to go by. Five. Twelve. Thirteen. Could go into the reds here, Rob Milkins. He'd be unlucky not to be on something. Perhaps just didn't quite have enough angle on the black. Twenty. Twenty one. <clears throat> Twenty eight. Twenty-nine. Very unfortunate that the black isn't available. Well, he went straight down to the pink, to the left centre there, Rob. But it appears he's having second thoughts. Oh, this has to go in. Typically gutsy from Milkins. There was risk attached there for sure. It wasn't easy. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. He'll keep coming. Well, two shots that he won't be thrilled with. You could see his annoyance at being slightly hampered 43. on the black, even more so on the red. Forty-four. Focus, concentration, imperative now for Milkins. There's not much room to manoeuvre from here. But another whirlwind 51. break. It's been a fabulous... 52. ...slab of entertainment for this capacity crowd here at the York Barbican. Frames have been flying by in a blur.
59. Well, everything's on. No reason. Well, Rob Milkins Six. can't complete a century break here. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. Barely six and a half minutes so far, this frame. And already, a point of no return, this time for O'Sullivan. And Milkins is still very much in the hunt 72. here. He's playing well now, the first few frames were a bit indifferent in terms of quality, but 73. since the interval, we've seen some terrific snooker from both players. This is another example. 78. Thank you. 79. O'Sullivan knows he's still got a bit to do. He also knows that this is Milkin's best performance against him 86. by the proverbial country mile. 87. Ninety-four. Ninety-five. Well played, Rob Milkins. What a response. He's in the form of his life. Gibraltar Open champion a couple of years ago. Welsh Open champion last season. Could he possibly still cause a stunning upset? Well, he's only two frames away. And the way things are going this afternoon, that could equate to about 20 minutes. Hundred and six. Hundred and eight. Hundred eleven. Hundred fifteen. Such a naturally gifted player, Milkins. He makes the game look easy when he's in full flow. Twenty. stuff. Breakneck snooker, fabulous entertainment here at the Barbican. A 193rd career century for Rob Milkins. He's still right in the hunt. Now down. Great credit goes to Rob Milkins for staying in the Ronnie O'Sullivan has thrown plenty of heavy punches at him since he trailed 2-0. Four frames on the bounce. The highlight, a superb 1-4-2 total clearance. Further breaks of 86 and 53 and 49 and then 83 in the eighth. But Milkins has not been intimidated and he's just conjured a first century of the match himself to go with the two he made against Tep Chai. And remember, he was 5-3 down in that match and came out on top. Could he possibly do it today for one of the most satisfying victories of his career? One down with two to play, but this is back in the balance, Dom. It really is, yes. I mean, there's pressure on Rob Milkins now because he's only one frame behind, 5-4 down. He must believe that he can win this match, so the pressure's on him as well as that man there, Ronnie O'Sullivan, as he finally 
emerges back into the auditorium. Thank you. Settle down now, please. Tenth frame. Robert Milkey's to break. That's something Milkins has been good at today. His break-offs have put O'Sullivan under pressure. Hasn't had a straightforward long red to go at. A little tap of the table in acknowledgement of that. It's such an important shot these days, given the quality of these top professionals long potting, that you don't present your opponent immediately with a chance because if you present O'Sullivan with one, more often than not, he'll make something sizable from it. Longest frame we've had in this match was the very first frame, which lasted just over 17 minutes. Since then, the longest frame we've had other than the first frame, it's just one of 13 minutes, 43. Everything else has been around the 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 9 minutes mark. Incredible, really. Milkins a half chance in that previous frame when the ready intended to come back down this end of the table towards the black spot cannoned into the yellow and Rob Milkins potted a great red into the right centre. Oh, and his previous safety there nearly went wrong. having a look to see if there's any chance of cutting this red in that's near the right center of the big pardon the right corner pocket because you can't really see much else one unlucky unlucky not to can on the brown just a little thinner the other ball Robert Milkins won. <laughs> Rob Milkins' safety success of this match is at an uncharacteristically lowly 53%, but in truth there hasn't been a lot of safety. safety shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan, it really is. <coughs> Open the reds up. The right hand side of the table, very congested. Can't really do much down this left hand side of the table. He's got a problem here, Rob Milkins at first glance. something go Ooh, there's not much room there <coughs> 
Can O'Sullivan slot this red in? No problem. He's back in. I've got to say, Phil, that was a great shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's one of the hardest things to do, block out a ball. That's blocking part of the pocket you're aiming at and forget it's not there. Just focus on that little part of the pocket that you can see. Sullivan has played well in this match from 2-0 behind. So he'll be very conscious of the fact that Milkins is playing well enough to beat him today. Doesn't want to get into final frame deciding territory. Seven. Looking to kill this off here and now. Thirteen. Fourteen. Ronnie's purposely 19. being a little more measured here because he doesn't want to make a mistake. He knows Rob Milkins is looking extremely dangerous at the moment. Viciously attacking style of play that Rob Milkins has. Twenty. Not happy. Didn't get the backspin on it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 20. The frustration in O'Sullivan was very evident, just 20. Relief for Milkins that no great damage was done. Uh oh. Foul. Run your solo and fall. I think Rob tried to make a plant there. A little unlucky to find the pocket. Particularly, of course, if Ronnie takes this red on and knocks it in. He's knocked in some great ones from this kind of range today. Nine out of 12. Ooh, but not this time. He missed that by a margin. Maybe beginning to feel a bit of the pressure that's been applied by Milkins in staying with him this afternoon when in previous meetings he's wilted. Well. Well, Rob Milkins would love to play that shot again. Nicely placed on anything here. A couple of reds at the top of that group will pot into the right corner. 
See, he's not doing a lot of work with the cue ball. He'd be happy with this, though. Now he's back in amongst them. Could we be heading here to a deciding frame? Ball. Well, the pressure is really increasing now at the sharp end of this match. Five. But what an opportunity this is for Milkins. It was looking a Thirteen. Whatever happens between now and the end of the match. Eighteen. Nineteen. Black to take the lead. Twenty six. Twenty seven. O'Sullivan's turn to feel a little concerned. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Well, does Rob Milkins go into that little trio of reds here? Decision time. Forty. Forty-one. Well, it was to Rob Milkins' advantage that he put a red on the side cushion. All he needed were these two open reds with colours. And the frame was his, but... Bad days he overhit that. Was that a quick bounce on the bolt cushion? I think Rob Milkins thinks it was. Robert Milkins, 46. So, this pivotal 10th frame which Milkins needs to force that decider here at the Barbican in the balance. 23 in front. <laughs> 51 left, but Milkins does have that insurance of the awkward red. Close attendance to the yellow. Yes, but he may not for long. Ron has covered the two open ones. I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I think Rob has to play this. He can't do anything with the awkward red. Problem was, it was never going to be easy to keep this safe. And he hasn't really. Pressure's really on both of these players now. Heading into the critical stages of this frame. And he's missed the blue. As if to underline the point, suddenly things are getting serious. Milkins now, of course, does need the difficult red. So there's still some life in this frame. Well, I 
think Ronnie would be quite pleased that Rob decided to pot the pink there. Seven. It may be snookered Ronnie when he comes to the table, but I don't think it'll be too severe. Ron Wilkins, seven. I'm going to stand down there. Ronnie. Ben Williams keeping an eagle eye to ensure that it was red first, which it obviously was. But where's it ending up? Very nicely for Rob Milkins. We're surely going all the way. High drama at the Barbican. Thank you. One. The red was frame ball. He'll want the black to make sure 30 the difference with the colours left. Rob Milkins came into this match with a <coughs> abject record against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Eight. eight matches, eight defeats. And only seven, seven. frames won. But he's in the form of his life. He's a two-time ranking titleist and he has well and truly come to the party today. Robin Milkins, 10, on the frame. And now from 5-3 behind, he's one frame away from one of the most special victories of his life and a place in the UK quarterfinals for only the second time. It's a one-frame shootout. It's 5-all. When O'Sullivan recovered from a two-frame deficit to win four on the bounce and then move 5-3 in front, it looked like another fairly routine afternoon at the office for the seven times record UK championship winner. Thank you. Deciding it's anything but routine now. To break. It's down to the wire. This frame to determine who will go through to the last eight and play either John Higgins or Joe Yulong. Higgins, by the way, has pulled another frame back, so Joe's lead shaved from 4-1 to 4-3 on Discovery+. Plus. Sullivan perfect when he's been taking the limit this season. Hasn't played all that much, of course. Has missed four ranking events and the champion of champions. Not the first time he's done that. Well, it's a carbon copy of what he did a couple of frames ago. Rob Milkins knocked in this red to the centre pocket, made 120 from it. Pressure in the decider is unique. But that's a good start. That's a terrific pot again from Milkins. He'll be hoping that history can repeat itself. He gets the first chance in the final frame. Apologises to Ronnie because he played for the red that's next right. to the black there, Rob Milkins, and caught the pink. But he still has a red to the right corner. He's just having a look to see if the pink is still available. Six. Well, as chances go, this is a very good one. Oh, no. Oh, Rob apologised again there for leaving it safe. But when you see a player miss a pot that way, exactly that way, it's known in snooker terms as a twitch. Just as you strike the ball, the pressure just gets to you 
almost instant instantaneously and you just pull the cue offline and the shot goes astray. Let's have a look at this again. Oh dear. Still suffering a little about the pink, but he's got to forget about that now. He got away with it. He didn't leave anything, and he's played a good safety. He's got O'Sullivan under pressure again. Oh, he will suffer, though. He was thinking he could have made a lot of points there. But he has played a good safety. You're absolutely right, Phil. And Ronnie can roll up to the two reds to the right, very gently off the side cushion. Is he going to come off two cushions? The glancing escape... That was Foul. close. The miss. Now. Ron Wilkins four. Any harder, he could have left a free ball. <coughs> okay, Ronnie. If Ronnie catches the red too thickly, he could easily leave it near that right centre pocket. I never like this shot unless it's a last resort. Just lacking a little pace. Hand on the table, chance for Milkins. One. Sweet as you like. There's not quite so much pressure on this because the cue ball is going to be safe. It just depended on the red and it was an excellent pot. Just checking now. If he pots the pink and it gets re-spotted, does the red to the left of the pink still pot? Needs to be precise. That was pretty good. Seven. Oh, just. Eight. This is as much about nerve as skill at this stage. Milkin stay in the moment, take it ball by ball. Forget about the prize at the end of this frame. Just build a lead. Forget about the scoreboard and the match situation. 14. You make it sound easy, Phil. <laughs> Anything but. But that's the secret, isn't it? Yes, it is. And the red at pace had to be bang on. It wasn't. It called the near jaw, so the break ends prematurely. As Sullivan breathes again. Considering you played it left handed. Well, this is Ronnie's opportunity. What can you do with it? Needs an initial good positional shot here because these reds are rather blocking one another. Four. 
Five. Mark looking on, wondering, hoping he'll get back to the table. Eleven. Twelve. <coughs> Eighteen. That red nets the black. Don't think it pots. So Ronnie will have to focus 19. on the pink predominantly. And as long as he remains high on it, as he has done here, he can always give himself a chance to play for his next red. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Feels he had a fast bounce there, but he's fine. Both of those sets of two reds there are fine. They all pot into that left corner. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. No sign of any slowing down here. Inside of victory. O'Sullivan in the groove again. Milkins had the first chance and the second. Missed the pink and then missed the red to the right centre. Forty. And now at the mercy of the seven-time champion. He just flicked one of those reds there. I think he's fine. He can play for a red into the same pocket here. Is this to slow down? Oh, it's gone. Oh dear. Forty. It feels he had a very fast bounce there. Useless, says O'Sullivan. Another twist. 22 in front, still 59 on the table. Thank you. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 46. All handy little kiss on the green for Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's very annoyed that he lost position there, but. This match remains on a knife edge. Can Rob see that red in the left hand cushion there? That's all he could do, really. I have to presume the red nets the black doesn't pot. Oh, surely there's not a plant there. gets a further opportunity in this decider. <coughs> He's overcut it. That's three chances that have come and gone for Milkins. One of the best victories of his life. 
It's very tense. It's very pressurised. Who's going to have the last word? Advantage O'Sullivan. Back at the table. Oh, Phil, that's pure pressure, isn't it, from Rob's point of view? That just shows you, doesn't it? One of the greatest potters, and certainly Rob's one of those. Just what pressure can do to you. Six. To be playing too many of these in this situation, I can promise you. It caught the near jaw, but it's in. 29 the lead, only 43 left. O'Sullivan doing the maths, not always easy under this sort of pressure in a decider. Well, for me, blue, red, brown, and he'll be safe, won't he? Twelve. It's often said in a final frame like this. Thirteen. The players would say to themselves, just give me one chance, one opportunity to take it out. Well, Rob Milkins has had three. And he could only muster 24 points, and Ronnie O'Sullivan looks set to make him pay. 15. Snooker required. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Fifteen of snooker. Rob Milkins has played against Ronnie O'Sullivan like he's never played before, and yet it still hasn't quite been enough. Breakneck stuff. Fabulous entertainment for this capacity Barbican crowd, but it's a 20th UK Championship quarter-final for the record seven times UK champion. Ronnie O'Sullivan has come through an absolute thriller against the Milkman by six frames to five.